Hey guys! I talk about propagation boxes a lot on my channel because I'm kind of obsessed with them, but I don't think I've ever really done a video of a propagation box from start to finish, from like setting up the box itself, taking cuttings, the maintenance all in between, on the real timeline, if that makes sense, like actually how long it takes from start to finish to grow plants in a propagation bin. Today, I thought I would start this process and take you along the entire journey of setting up this propagation bin. Before we get into the setting up the actual bin, we need to take some plant cuttings and I do have a few plants set aside here that I will be taking cuttings from. What are you? A silver sword, philodendron silver sword, I narrow form, I believe it is. We have some. Syngonium erythrophyllum, this kind of newish skindapsis, uh, but this is a skindapsis blue something. I will put the name on screen. I also am going to chop up this philodendron melanochrysum, which is actually kind of funny because it's going to be full circle. I guess same with the silver sword, but it was a cutting I took threw it in some moss. It is now outgrowing the cup and I want to chop it up and get a more full plant. I don't just want a single stem of this. I kind of want like a full bushier plant. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And yeah, philodendron melanochrysum. With whatever space we have left in the propagation bin, I will be filling it up with some Cebu blue cuttings. I've been meaning to propagate these or get these potted up for quite some time. I took them about a week ago and they've just been growing in water because I ran out of time and could not get them put into a bin. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to get them into some moss. So, I mean, you can see they are already starting to grow some roots. These will be really easy to propagate. So I'm just gonna separate each of these nodes. It doesn't really matter how long the nodes are on your cuttings. With more rare or difficult to propagate varieties, I do like to keep my nodes as long as possible in case I do start getting like rot issues. I have a little bit more wiggle room to chop and like start fresh on the cutting, if that makes sense. If you do it too short, if you get rot, like the odds of salvaging the cutting are a little bit more slim. So that's just something to keep in mind with like Cebu Blue, where they're so easy to propagate and I have a lot of experience with that. I don't mind keeping them really small, but really the only thing you have to worry about are is the rot and then of course them fitting into whatever like container you're going to use in your actual propagation bin so just just a little sum to keep in mind not like a huge deal though and where i am cutting this plant up that's well rooted i'm going to actually just keep another node that has grown from the node that's actually in the moss if that makes sense so i have a node sitting like sideways like this under the moss that this grew from. As long as I keep an extra node other than that first one I cut on the plant, then it will actually keep growing back. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go throw this back into my tent and get another plant from it. And I think for the sake of this video, I'm probably just going to leave um, the leaves on just so that you guys can like keep track of which plant is which. It might not be as interesting to watch like bare nodes grow, but you know what, look right here. We have a node here and a node there. So I'm actually going to have a bare node that we can watch, a bare philodendron melanochrysum one. I usually cut the leaves off, I have to be honest. Okay, and then the silver sword. And there are actually a few leafless nodes on this guy as well. So we'll be able to watch a few leafless nodes grow. My favorite cuttings to watch grow back in are actually top cuts because like, look, this is the top cut for one node and it's going to grow in so beautifully. It's gonna be such a good looking plant. I'm so excited. Again, I left one node on here so that the plant can grow back. My supplies I have are long fiber sphagnum moss mixed with some perlite. I've talked about how I don't actually really like mixing perlite into sphagnum moss. I've changed my mind, I do like it. And then the cups we're going to use, which I use three ounce cups. Also baby food containers, yogurt containers, um, coffee containers containers. You can really use anything to propagate in, but I'm going to be using these three ounce cups and I did burn holes into the bottom of them. Although you totally don't have to do that. This is more if more so if you just want to be able to add water into the box itself and let the moss absorb whatever moisture it needs to remoisten itself. Otherwise you will just have to add cutter. You will just have to add water to each of the individual cups as they're in the box, which that really isn't like a bad 
plan either, but a lot of the times I like to keep my plants growing in these cups, so I do prefer to have the drainage holes, but that's just me. Again, it's totally personal preference. Okay, now we're just gonna pot them up. Add a little bit of sphagnum moss to the bottom of my cup. Kind of poke a hole in the middle there. Take my cut, I'm going to wrap a little bit of moss around it, like this, and stick it in the cup. Easy as that, and then it goes into, huh, you guessed it, the propagation bin. Oh no, these cuttings are a little bit bigger than my box. I mean, that's a good problem to have. Okay, I should also mention, you want your moss to be wet, but not sopping. So you want it to be wet enough that obviously it's dampened, not so wet that when you pick it up, it drips water. It can be a little bit on the dry side. I think it's better to air on the dry side, especially if you're just starting out. But yeah, you wanna just like kind of squeeze as much out as you can, and then that's the point that it's good to propagate in. And on that note, kind of, you really wanna lightly put the moss into the cup. You really don't wanna compact it down like at all because that's how you end up with not enough airflow and where it is such a humid environment inside of these boxes. You need to be really weary about having enough airflow to the actual root system because yeah, that's how you end up with like, um, rot or mold issues. Well, mostly rot issues, especially on the plant itself. Make sure you're not like compacting it really. Um, I guess, let me show you a comparison. In this cup, I'm gonna compact the moss down. And I mean, really, of course, like you can do everything however you want it, want to do it. But this is just from my personal experience. Here are our two cups and it might not be that easy to see the difference, but this one is overly compacted. It definitely doesn't have enough airflow in there. In my personal opinion, in my personal experience, this one is a lot better. I barely put it in there. I just kind of, I didn't force too much in there. So yeah, that's really what it comes down to. You don't want to like push it down too much. I don't know, I hope that that's like a helpful comparison because I know a lot of people have told me that they've had issues with their boxes and I do think that overly compacting the moss um, seems to be something that when they send me photos of their box, I'm like, oh yeah, there's definitely too much moss pushed into, <laughs> into that cup. So maybe pull it out, fluff it up and put like three quarters of the amount back. If you're having issues with the roots rotting, I think that that is a big thing to check. Okay, so right here I have, well actually I have two empty nodes, which I don't wanna forget what the plant is. So what I like to do in this situation, identify the plant so I don't forget. All right, I take masking tape and put it on the cup like this. Silver sword narrow form so that I don't forget. Wow, so far we have four of each plant. That I did not plant it that way, just happy accident. Wow, on this one we have four too. <laughs> wow. Um, so another thing you should check if you're ending up with mold or rot in your box is A, if there's too much moisture. So uh, where you wring out the amount of water in the moss is actually pretty important. And you just kind of need to find what works for you and your size of bin, and then also the amount of plants you have in it with the amount of light that it has. What else, what else, what else? I had another thing to say. Oh, and then also if you're ending up with rot, you may not be giving the plants enough sunlight. I'll show you where I will be putting this box. If they don't have enough sun, then the plants, you know, aren't gonna grow and they're probably going to rot because they can't photosynthesize. Um, I did only use tap water to wet my moss. And as I continue watering it, I mean, I will, like I said, give you updates through the entire process, but as I water the moss and it starts getting growth points, and then also especially root growth, once I'm seeing root growth, then I will go ahead and start adding some nutrients to the box. Uh, you know, so the plants can have like energy to grow, of course, that's important. It is important to have nutrients to grow, plants and us. You know, we're basically just a bunch of plants, really. I'm convinced. So we have our box all full. I'm gonna put the lid on and yeah, go put it where it's going to stay. I will keep you updated through the entire process of this propagation bin until it's time to move on to the next, I don't know, the next 
thing, you know, with the plants in this box. So here is what we are left with. Looks good, looks good if you ask me. Normally I keep my propagation bins inside my grow tent, but I know not everybody has a grow tent. So I will be showing you on a south facing window, which I need to move some things around, hang on. Some things to know about where you end up putting your propagation bin is it needs high light. If it's not getting enough light, you may end up with rot. Also, it needs to not be cold. So at least bare minimum, it has to be 55 degrees Fahrenheit for your cuttings to not die. For most plants to not die, for them to actually grow, I'd say it needs in the 70s to 80 degrees where you're keeping the box. So <laughs> be sure you keep it somewhere warm enough. You don't have to put it right on the windowsill. If it is cold outside, you can move it a little bit farther back from a south window and it should be just fine. I'm gonna keep it right next to the south window because it is getting warm where I live and it's above 60 degrees at nighttime. There's our little plants. I will keep you updated. Okay, so it is now 4 24. It's been two weeks since I started this propagation bin and I just thought I'd give you a little update. There's not too much to write home about because these are super low maintenance, but yeah, as you can see, the humidity is staying up on the propagation bin. I have condensation in the morning and evening times, and I've just been kind of keeping a watch on it. I'll check on it, I don't know, every few days just to make sure everything is going well. But pretty much the only update we have right now is that a few of our Cebu blue cuttings are actually already starting to develop these pretty substantial like aerial roots, which tells me they are also probably rooting in the cup as well. Um, they are two weeks out. Yeah, right there. I mean, you can see there's some root there when I pulled, tried to pull the plant out, put my finger under it so you can see that kind of dislodged itself. But as I'm tugging on each of the plants, they aren't really moving, which really does say that they are rooting. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead. Ooh, I should not do this. Normally I would not do this, but you know, for the sake of this video, I will show you what is going on. We do have some root growth there as well as there. So I'm like fairly certain that most of these cuttings are rooting because as I pull on them, they are kind of hard to wiggle. I mean, if you give them a little tug and they come right out, oh, this one has some roots growing because it's hard to pull out. Yeah, I mean, that, that says everything we need to know. Um, they're doing well, they're growing. Those don't have any roots yet. Thought I would give you a little update. I have not had to add any water to the bin. It's holding its moisture really well because I am keeping it snapped shut. And yeah, that is it for now. I just, <laughs> it's been two weeks, so I thought I needed to give you some sort of an update. And thankfully I noticed these little aerial roots, which again tells me that Things are rooting, it is happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on the bin, back underneath the light, and I'll be back when we have roots or when I have to water it so I can show you what we're going to look for when it's time to water. So the propagation bin is ready to be watered. Oh, it's actually still pretty well moisturized. Um, I will go ahead and add a little water just to show you though. I haven't had to yet. Most of these are actually rooted. I do just water them with some liquider water. Of course, I have liquider linked down below. I have a coupon code HarleyG underscore 25 for 25% 25 off your order. Um, it works really well. And as you can see, I just pour it in there and yeah, let them suck it up. I'll usually do it when the moss starts to look a little bit dry, but like I said, these are well watered. I just wanted to show you. Okay, so the Cebu Blue always root really, really quickly. So look, there's some roots there. I mean, if you look really closely, there are a lot of roots going on, lots of actual <laughs> growth as well. These were just the leaves, remember, if you remember. Um, look at that root. Wow. Zebu Blue are really awesome. These are so well rooted. And roots coming out of the bottom. So that's cool. These are literally the exact same plants. You, I didn't change anything. You can just see how quick they, the process is. These propagation bins are really <laughs> like miracle. Wow, look at that root. Look at that root. Really miracle little growing things. And of course, some plants grow faster than others. So <laughs> the sea blue are awesome. Um, but I will say I do regret showing you 
with this type of Syngonia. For some reason, this is the slowest growing, slowest propagating Syngonia, but I always like to use this one as the example. But as you can see, it is rooted in there because when I tug on it, this whole cluster comes out, which means the roots are attached to something. Um, let's see about this one, also rooted, but you cannot see any any of the growth on the sides of the cup because like I said, these are the slowest ones. I really wish I would use um, a different example. These will take probably a couple months. This one actually isn't rooted at all, but the new leaf is gonna unfurl. So that's exciting, I guess. <laughs> I'm so full of regret right now. Oh, and this one's not rooted at all either. So we are 50-50. If you guys remember my which substrate is best video, best to propagate in video, those did terrible in that video as well. I should just stop using them. So going forward, I will not be using these as examples because they just take way too long and I don't want to wait months for them to grow when literally everything else I grow in these propagation bins like takes off. I mean, here's the melanochrysum. You can see roots are like literally bulging out and coming out um, aerial, aerial roots. Like, look at that, look at that. So many roots. This one is getting a new leaf. Really exciting. Roots going around the bottom. Roots there, there, everywhere. This one is also getting a new leaf, which is again, exciting. So things take off, like they genuinely do take off. And this one is a cup that had just a note in it. So if you remember that from before, here is the new leaf. And let's see where the roots are on this baby. You can't see the roots on it in the cup anywhere. At least I can't even with my eyes. So I'm assuming you won't be able to on camera. Um, yeah, you can't see them anywhere, but it clearly is growing and it clearly is rooted because I can't pull it out of the cup. So those are all of the melanochrysum. Let's check up on the anadendrum. Or no, this is uh, a skindapsis. They are rooted. No new growth points or anything, but it is definitely rooted. Oh yeah, you can see the root right there. That's exciting. These were taking kind of a long time to root. I have come in and checked on them once and they weren't rooted two weeks ago. So it took a long time for them to actually root. But once they did, like, it kind of seems like the roots shot off because there literally was nothing on them when I checked before. Look, this one's wrapped all the way around. So in the last two weeks, they've done a lot of work. I hope you guys like seeing like this. I think it's really exciting to be able to see the change over time. So we've ended up with like rooted plants. These are definitely going to start shooting off growth points now. Like the roots are looking awesome. There's a little root coming out of the bottom of this one. This was the top cut, I think, was it? Yeah, it was. Um, and this is looking so cute. So a few of these, several of these are ready for me to sell or if like I wanted to propagate to make my own plants more full, then I would go ahead and plant them together now. Yeah, I don't sell plants until they start getting new growth points though. So like these ones won't be available, but all of these other ones, narrow leaf, uh, philodendron hastatum, I believe it was, Silver Sword Narrow Form, yeah. Um, like this one will definitely be available for sale on the Foliage Fix. Look at, look at those wild, crazy roots. Ooh, I love it. I love it. This one is kind of surprising. I mean, okay, you can see. This is the node we took for the Silver Sword Narrow Form, but there are roots right there. Ooh, the lighting is not going to let you see this very well. Uh, but it is rooted, no new growth point yet. Oh, and all of the rest of these are actually the same. Oh, look, this one's starting to get, this one is rooted. Also, all of them have rooted. This one is actually starting to get a growth point. So that's exciting also, yay. And then, like we said, this is kind of sad story. Everything else is doing great. And that's it, honestly, that is genuinely it. My best tips I can give are to make sure your box isn't too wet and that your box is getting enough sunlight. So starting off, maybe just how we did, how I showed you before, make sure you're squeezing the moisture out of the sphagnum moss really, really Really well and uh, this is a very good example of a box that's a little bit too wet. How you can tell your box is too wet is if it has this condensation going on all the time. So um, I do have the lid closed on this right now. If you were worried about how much moisture is going on, um, I do think it's better to air a little bit on the side of caution, especially when you're starting out, because if you keep it too wet, like 
uh, with condensation like this all the time, you can lose your plants very, very quickly. So maybe err on the side of caution and keep your lid like slightly propped up. So what I like to do on some of these boxes that have uh, this kind of handle is I'll flip it up like that and just sit the lid on top so that it can air out a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm not actually going to do that on the Syngonium bin because I do know my plants are doing quite well with this level of moisture. And um, I don't know, I just have a lot of propagation box experience, so I'm not as worried. But if you are just starting out, that's something you can do to make sure you're not going to lose your plants to excess moisture. So... If you are worried about it drying out too much, you could always like keep the sphagnum moss pretty wet, but then like crack the lid or not even have a lid on it. It'll still help hold, hold moisture. Like not as well, of course, with an open box, but it still helps somehow. I don't no, I don't know, but it works, I promise. And then just as your plant grows, if you wanna keep them in these bins and the sphagnum moss, just make sure that once your plant begins to root, you are adding nutrients of some sort. So whether it be liquid dirt, um, whatever plant food you like to use, fertilizer you like to use, go ahead and make sure you're continuing to use it in the propagation bins. But once it starts pushing out roots, because sphagnum moss does have some nutrients in it, but not enough to keep the plant going for like super prolonged periods of time. And by keep the plant going, like your plant should do fine in it for a while. Like it's not going to really push out a lot of new growth points or roots if it doesn't have the proper nutrients. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and then actually <laughs> one more tip. Look at this Syngonium strawberry ice I'm growing. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Truthfully, I don't get bugs in propagation bins very often. If I do, it's fungus gnats. And fungus gnats are fortunately very easy to deal with. So I'll just go in with my mosquito bits, I'll just sprinkle them in like, like this. And the problem will resolve itself over time. You just have to wait for the mosquito bit, the fungus gnats to lay their eggs and then the larva to eat the mosquito bits and it'll stop the cycle. I don't intend to introduce any pests into people's houses. That's all I do and it works well. I've, I've truthfully not had very many issues. If you have plants, it just kind of happens sometimes. But yeah, mosquito bits are my favorite thing for fungus gnats. And I will have these linked down below. They work well. That's what I do. I guess since the Syngonium erythrophyllum didn't work out very well, I'm going to show you some Syngonium that I have in here that are working well. Um, all of these are there's not a single erythrophyllum in here and these have all grown so fast. So this is a green splash, one of my favorite varieties, but it is um, definitely a little bit more elusive. Uh, you can see lots of roots right there. This is like a pretty good plant. Um, here we have a node grown army. I think it's called the army syngonium. Really, really cute or modeled. I think it goes by, ah. Oh, another modeled, or or maybe this is, yeah, this is modeled. Lots of roots on there. As far as acclimation, I've truthfully never had a problem taking a plant out of the boxes and into my regular like house, as long as I'm keeping the plant well watered. If you put it in your house and then you're not watering the plant like frequently enough, then of course you're gonna have issues. But as long as you're watering the plant often, like it'll be fine, so. Oh my gosh, I lied. There is actually an erythrophyllum in here and this is the only one, just a little one. So cute, let's see, roots, lots of roots for such a little plant. This was definitely a node plant. So <laughs> this one is proof it can be done. It just takes a lot longer than the rest of these. Um, here's a cute little Syngonium ribbon. What else do I wanna show you? So cute, some roots there. This is one I actually listed on the shop that didn't sell. So I'm gonna keep it for myself. <laughs> But yeah, it works. Yay, go plants, especially Syngonium. They're the best, right? Do you think? I think. Really it, honestly, from start to finish. So like, I mean, you saw they grow so, so well. I love them. I hope that this video answered any of your questions. I hope. There's honestly not a lot to it, so I don't know like what kind of questions you guys have about them. Leave a comment with any of those questions and I'll do my best to answer them. So yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see my next one. Bye!